Hey everyone, it's Owen here from OTEC and today I will be unboxing the ASRock AB350 Pro 4 motherboard for the socket AM4 from AMD which is the Ryzen socket and this is the B350 chipset and although it's not the highest end, unlike Intel, it does support overclocking so I'll look into that when I use it in the second Ryzen build that I'll be doing with this motherboard and all the other unboxing of parts that you've seen before and mind you the first build video is going to come out pretty soon but I'll probably just upload these unboxings first and yeah so let's get on to it on the front of the box you get some like graphics of a P for the Pro 4 and although this sounds like it's the high-end motherboard because it's Pro and all that you should now know that a lot of manufacturers just put Pro and Professional and stuff on the product moniker just to show that it sounds like high quality, higher quality because this motherboard is the cheapest B350 motherboard you can get from ASRock and also from other brands actually I haven't seen anything that's cheaper than this at least here in Indonesia where I am so on the bottom you get the Ryzen logo and I see something interesting is they're advertising the A12 7 gen um, APUs already over here so even though it's pretty much confirmed AMD hasn't talked much about that, so kind of curious why they put these logos over here. So, because this is a cheaper motherboard, it also has an HDMI connector, since you could probably be using this with an APU, not just the Ryzen uh, CPUs, which doesn't have CPUs, but uh, which doesn't have GPUs. So, yeah, but I'll be using this with the Ryzen r 4 r5 1400 so i'll see the overclocking capabilities of this motherboard on that especially with this with this feature which they call digit power so but pretty much all motherboards have digital power these days so it's kind of moot point it supports triple monitor from the uh video outputs alna audio cast basically higher quality audio capacitors to help the audio quality uh, super alloy power and stuff so better quality power delivery components USB type C and dual M.2 for SSD so this is really cool since this is the cheaper motherboards on Intel boards you need a quite expensive motherboard to get these M.2 slots so it's quite interesting and it shows that you know AMD is really stirring up the market these days and over on the bottom you see the specifications and you know interestingly you also get the Radeon logo which I assume is because they'll have to support APUs on this uh, motherboard as well as they say over here Bristol Ridge so yeah let's take a look uh, on the mother motherboard itself and you get the RAM guide installation guide so you kinda do need these since you need to know where to put them and the maximum frequency officially supported and you get the Astro RGB LED paper like documentation thing so you know all AMD AM4 motherboards basically the decent ones have RGB connectors on them so that's a kind of like a, a feature checklist from AMD because their CPU coolers have RGB LEDs for the higher end ones and I'm not sure what these two screws are for but I'm assuming it's for the M.2 SSD kind of uh, slots so we'll see and these are the user manual a lot of pages a lot of languages and you also get the driver disk which I always say download the latest from the Azeroth website you know the motherboard manufacturer and I guess you also get the case sticker which is actually metal so that looks really cool but yeah that's uh, that's it for the documentation you got the back panel IO plate as usual you also get the SATA connectors uh, cables as usual and you also get the motherboard then so it comes in an anti-static uh, wrap as usual because that's how you ship motherboards so yeah I'm not sure why I said that so here it is and I can tell that it looks pretty cool already although seems like this heatsink is kind of loose so take a look into that um, yeah so 
It's a white and silver themed motherboard basically. It'll go pretty well in pretty much any build since white is pretty much a um, neutral color scheme. So it'll reflect off RGB lights pretty well. And let's uh, take a look at the heatsink first because that looks a bit loose. So is that actually loose? Well, the pins are on, and I guess they just have a bit of play, but yeah, it's fine, it's fine. It's just they have a bit of play. I was kind of surprised at first. I don't, I, ha I haven't really seen that before. Probably they just kind of use a different mounting solution. So, anyways, uh, kind of getting a bit too off topic. So, here's the socket itself the retention arm for the AM4 CPUs, and the AIM4 cooler bracket, although you won't use this if you're using the stock cooler from AMD because you just used the back plate and also then just screw on the heatsink. So this is just for the other coolers that just clip on. So AIM3 coolers can fit on AIM4 just fine if they use the clip on method, but if they use the back plate method then it won't work. So here there's the 8 pin EPS connector and you see that this board has uh, like a 6 phase power delivery for the CPU so that's quite beefy actually for a cheaper motherboard so that's interesting and it has a 3 phase for the SOC slash GPU portion if you're using an APU so yeah that's quite a beefy CPU VRM so I'll take a look at how that overclocks the 4 core 1400 although I can't say for sure for the 1800X and 1700 with the 8 cores which consume more power and here you see 4 DDR4 slots and also one 4-pin CPU fan connector and yeah you also get one more fan connector just over here chassis fan 4-pin and you get the RGB headers over here and you also I think it's pretty interesting that they include two even on cheaper uh, even on more expensive motherboards actually they only include one of these so that's pretty cool that they include two of these RGB headers and it seems to me they have a two-phase uh, motherboard um, memory VRM setup. So that's quite a lot. Usually um, memory VRM is just one phase. And over here the ATX24 pin as usual. USB 3.0 connector. Two SATA connectors. And you also get these SATA connectors over here. And these are connected all to the chipset. Or some of those go to the CPU straight away in this SOC, SOC portion although I'm not too sure and on AMD motherboards and platform the M.2 connectors is wired straight to the CPU so they have their own special lanes for M.2 so that's pretty cool instead of like Intel where you have to share and kind of like do a balancing act of the PCIe lanes so yeah here's the chipset heatsink quite beefy and the second M.2 slot and also over here you get the front panel connectors chassis fan connectors, two of them, clear CMOS USB 2.0, two of them, that's pretty cool actually for a cheaper board uh, COM port, TPM port and also audio on the bottom, on the corner although this might be a problem on cheaper cases where the cable is pretty short so would have been nice if they positioned it a bit over here but I guess to like connect with the electrically like electrically uh, isolated PCB of the audio portion I guess that what, that's what they have to do and you know this audio codec isn't the best one you need the X370 motherboards from what I've seen to get the higher end codecs and yeah Nuvoton IO uh, chip so for the fans and everything else monitoring and you got two PCIe X16 slots although only one of those is actually x16 so this is to the cpu 3.0 speed so that's what you want to plug in your gpu in although this one you can do it too for a crossfire setup and but this will go through the chipset and although the chipset is much less constrained than on intel's platform it's still not the most ideal setup for multi gpu so i wouldn't really recommend even a crossfire setup on this and sli is just outright not supported on x4 like this so yeah and you also get like one, two, three, four uh, PCIe X1 connectors. So you got total one, two, three, four, five, six. 
uh, PCIe connectors that you can use at your disposal and on the back you see the two um, USB 2.0 connectors PS2 uh, combined port and one DVI port one VGA port, one HDMI, one USB Type-C um, USB 3.1 Gen 2, USB 3.0 or they call USB 3.1 Gen 1 but they're the same thing, just marketing thing so four of those and also an RJ45 Ethernet connector and also the audio in and outs so not a whole lot of audio connectors but again this is a cheaper board so you can kinda expect that and I don't see that as a problem you can just use an external DAC or an, a second sound card on this so yeah if you if you really want to improve audio so yeah on the back you can see that the motherboard is finished in like a glossy black color not my favorite since I like matte black motherboards the most they look the best but you know as long as it's black it looks pretty much okay to me and this has like some pretty cool white printing on them so it's kind of unique looking but yeah that's pretty much it for this unboxing stay tuned to see how it performs in overclocking in my Ryzen build so yeah thank you for watching hope you enjoyed the video and if you do please leave a like and please click subscribe to see more of my videos thanks for watching